Hi, I'm John Stein, Executive Director of the Open Voice Network. We make work voice worthy of user trust, and this is the Future of Voice podcast. Welcome. Today we have a very exciting, a great guest to our podcast, Yelam Edesteren. Um, he's Regional Director of North America for SESTEC, um, a leading speech recognition technology company. Um, his background, um, gosh, for more than 25 years, executive roles at Siemens and Intel, led digital transformation projects in telecom, retail, fin finance, education, and public industries. He was country manager of Intel Turkey in 2017, joined Vora, Vera Ventures as a venture partner in 2018, and he moved to the States, to Boston in 2019, no doubt enjoying his Dunkin' Donuts, and started advising. He's been advising tech startups in that role on strategic planning and business development. And prior to joining SESTEC, he led the global sales and marketing efforts at Ant Media. It's a U.S.-based video stream platform as the chief revenue officer, but now as regional director in North America of SESTEC and driving SESTEC's expansion plans for North America. Yelam, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, excited to be here. Delighted to welcome you and give us the, tell us, just give us background about SESTEC. Um, an Istanbul company, global reach, maybe a lot yeah. of us don't know much about SESTEC. Um, yeah, give us the background. Tell us how this began. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an amazing story, uh, SESTEC. SESTEC is, uh, was founded back in 2000 uh, by uh, and now professor teaching at one of the top universities in, in Turkey, uh, who uh, in the late 90s uh, got his PhD from Duke, a master's science from Duke, and worked on voice uh, recognition, conversion uh, in different companies such as Texas Instruments and Entropic Research, and had some patents and where uh, Entropic Research got acquired by Microsoft. Uh, and then he moved to Turkey and founded SESTEC. And we started, uh, uh, the first products were uh, the speech recognition and text-to-speech, coupled with uh, natural language uh, processing or understanding. So those were the initial core technologies and the products. But over the years, um, John, as you know, all, enterprise, all enterprises, companies, uh, are trying to increase the efficiency and productivity all across their operations, right? So, um, and customer services, customer interactions, conversations with your customers, interactions with your customers took its fair share out of this trend, the increasing the productivity and efficiency trend. So, in SESTEC, uh, at SESTEC, we saw the uh, uh, opportunity uh, there, uh, in terms of automating the customer interactions, customer conversations. So we started building products around it. So the first product was the speech analytics. And uh, the second one was the virtual agent. Uh, and the third one is uh, the voice biometry. So if you take a look at that, all these three major products that we have in the market right now are kind of uh, building blocks of that uh, conversational automation. So we first automate it with the virtual agents, the interactions. So it's not only uh, live agents, but also the virtual agents, be it a chat bot or a voice bot. So we have that capability. And uh, then we uh, authenticate them through a voice biometry, those interactions through a voice biometry solution, which saves uh, 20 to 30 seconds of uh, average handling times in different operations. So that's a saving and also automation and uh, faster service for those call centers and BPOs. And then uh, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. It's Then we analyze it. And we don't only analyze the transcribed text, but also we analyze the audio piece. So we have a list of acoustic parameters that we look into. And... Um, and we, we, we provide those uh, insights out of those conversations. That's so, a, forgive me, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that conversational automation is uh, actually, we want to excel in this one. So our roadmap is totally geared for that. 
and we're uh, working on new features and functionalities on that uh, on that front. Um, yeah, I mean, happy to be in this space. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's very innovative space and uh, love being here. Yeah. Well, no, there's all kinds of things that are going on in the space, but you mentioned the analytics and, you know, it's automating processes, of course. It is, you know, using NLP, NLU, you know, yeah. in that automation process, but the use of, of, I should say, the exploration, the analysis of caller sentiment, of agent sentiment. Tell us about that. Tell us, you know, about Sestech's approach and, and what's unfolding. There. Absolutely. I mean, that is one of the hot topics in the industry. And also we're working on that part. So we, are, we currently, we provide the sentiment analysis. So uh, out of a call, we know the sentiment of the call. But what we are working right now is to segment the call into smaller pieces and see the trend of the sentiment. So the entry sentiment and the exit sentiment of the customer uh, is extremely important. So how the agent handles the call. So that's a different success metric. Uh, we believe the... Uh, the call centers, the uh, operations, those BPOs should be looking into. And we're working on delivering on that uh, uh, premise. So uh, that is the next step for us. So within this year, I think you too, uh, we will be able to provide that to the market. Well, that's not an easy thing at all because you're, you're taking a look at the sentiment of the caller. And let's say there's a difficult situation going on for the brand and that caller may be angry you're managing the sentiment of the agent and watching that, you know, how is the agent handling this? And then you're tracking that through the call, you know, and obviously I'm guessing that you'd want the caller to be, who might be angry at the start to be happier or satisfied or content at the end. You know, to, this sounds like a very complex set of an, of a very complex challenge for Sestech to be pulling all this apart. Absolutely. I mean, it's not easy to only by, it's not only to do that by only looking into the audio piece or looking into the uh, transcribed text piece. You may be angry, but you may be speaking in a very quiet mode and uh, your tone would be, would not be telling that one, like a poker face, right? But you, you might have been very angry. Or the other way around, you might be a very hyped person. And even when you are you see something good, you may, your um, reactions could be uh, taken as a kind of a, oh, but something going wrong here. So this customer is getting angry or something. No. So what we are doing is actually combining all these two insights that we get out of the transcribed text. So out of that NLU, so, and also uh, uh, the audio piece. So the tension, we're measuring the tension. And there are other parameters that we combine to get that uh, uh, sentiment uh, in the best way we can. So certainly if I'm all very excited, I could be very excited because I'm happy or I could be very excited because I'm angry. You're able by matching acoustic with text and perhaps other factors, you're able to say, this is the situation. And here Absolutely. we are managing that, you know, in various pieces all throughout the conversation. Um, any insights how often that would be checked or is that still in development? It is still, it's still, it's still in the development. So the, uh, the R&D team is working on that. We're trying to find the best uh, one. So you'll be hearing from us soon. Uh, <laughs> Good. Uh, give us, um, you've been obviously, Sestech, and this is a fascinating topic, just the the understanding of caller sentiment and agent sentiment. Um, no doubt you've been having some tests and trials. Um, any stories, any kind of yeah. interesting insights that come, have come out of this thus far that perhaps we wouldn't expect? Absolutely. I mean, there are many, but something that, that I wasn't expecting uh, out of a customer, the insights that we got out of uh, a customer operation, uh, the customer is Cigna, Cigna Health. 
So they are operation in Turkey. So that's a health insurance uh, and life insurance company. Uh, it's a U.S. company, actually, we, we, but we work with the Turkey branch. So uh, interesting finds out of that exercise that we did on the analytics side. So I've been in the sales uh, for almost my entire professional life. So I know how to sell things and how to manage the, uh, the customer meetings. But interesting one is, so finds, what we did in that uh, account, in that uh, customer's side, we, uh, our, our analytics tool gives you the ability to make a statistical comparison between two different profiles. So if you're looking at a kind of a comparison between a successful and an unsuccessful profile and trying to identify the reasons why these people cannot sell and these people can sell, or these people cannot um, uh, solve the problem of the customer and these people can. So that statistical comparison is not only based on the words that they articulated, but also uh, the acoustic, as as we talked about, the acoustic parameters as well. So in this analysis, what we uh, had seen is it was a kind of a sales uh, uh, conversation rather than a service part one. So the numbers did matter. So at the agent who spent time uh, articulating about the returns of the customer's investment and give some numbers and measurable uh, data to the customer, uh, managed to turn that into a sale. So that was one thing that they found out. So they, they turned back and said, that, okay, let's train our agents on this one. So speak more of numbers, 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 numbers. The second one is, it's interesting. So usually on a, if you're calling a customer service organization and the, that silence is not that much of a wanted or desired thing. So you don't want in that conversation a kind of a long, uh, awkward silence. But uh, uh, when you take when you get to a kind of a, get into a um, uh, sales call, the that awkward silence uh, works in your favor. So it's interesting. So that that gives a time uh, to the other side to think about what you have said. Maybe go through it. Maybe if you have questions. You're giving him time or her a time to come back to you with some extra uh, questions, clarifying questions. So, so that awkward silence. So that is also part of the feedback given to the agents. Okay, give some time for the customer to digest what you have been telling them. So that is the number th uh, to find out of those uh, analysis. And the third one is. Actually, it's interesting. It's about uh, it's coming out of the acoustic analysis. The um, usually you don't want your customer representatives um, to interrupt the other side to the customer, the patient, or the guest, wh whomever you're talking to. Uh, but sometimes, for, in a sales call, since you have something in mind, you you need to drive the call. So sometimes, not too much, but interrupting, overriding a little bit in the nicest and kindest way you can, <laughs> helps sell more. So those three finds, to me, is uh, very interesting. Well, to have to be, you know, you have been a sales manager, a country manager, a leader of sales teams. And, to, and I've been in that situation, too. And all too often, you'd look at, here's the successful individual, here's the person who's struggling, and you'd say, well, just be more like this person over here who's successful. Versus now you're able to give really some data, more precise feedback. This is what's working in this situation and enabling individuals to become more successful and certainly the overall results for the organization based upon the sentiment, you know, acoustic and textual analysis that SESTEC is providing here. Um, just absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is, and we're seeing an increasing trend of voice getting into the heart of everything. So there's, of course, different channels. But if you take a look at voice biometrics, it is trending upwards. So it's, but what we see, John, is uh, I think it's all across the industry, different industries. We're talking about digital transformation. We've been talking about digital transformation, I don't know, maybe 
since 2010s, fives. So it's been almost 15 to 20 years now. And it's happening all across, different applications, different use cases. And it's the technology and the tools uh, are just a part of it. So it's, it's, it starts with the change uh, within the organization, with the people who are going to be using it. So we're on this. Uh, uh, so we are also going through that uh, journey, going uh, through that journey. I mean, that's there are a lot of features, capabilities, functionalities coming with these tools. But the customer's need to use it needs to also grow. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to take some time uh, to um, benefit f- fully from these tools. But uh, we see a, a, a tremendous trend upwards uh, uh, about using these tools that we provide, these solutions, automation solutions that we provide. And uh, this market uh, is exciting to watch. I mean, that's really, that's exciting. Well, well, it's very exciting. And I think you're making a great point that oftentimes people think, here's an artificial intelligence and, you know, it's automating processes and that's going to be taking jobs. That's going to be cutting staff, creating efficiencies and the like. But through the use of these tools, you are also bringing the opportunity for the human agents who are going to be handling difficult calls to succeed and improve. And, and so it's the taking the technology, doing the digital transformation and putting that into human processes. It also helps those humans. And I think that's a great story that you just told us here. And, and an example of how the technology, how the transformation um, works in multiple ways and adds value in multiple ways. One final question. Um, you know, the companies has been based in Istanbul. You're reaching out to North America. I know you have colleagues in Europe. Um, this, is, this is not just an English only firm. I mean, you're, it, clearly Europe is multilingual, you're working in the Middle East. Um, tell us about kind of just the, the, the language reach of Sestec and, and, and how far that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great point. Thanks for bringing up it. I think we, uh, we are one of the few companies that can provide this many uh, languages, uh, language support uh, in these tools. So we provide... Uh, we support 23 plus languages and and this doesn't include the dialects or the accents uh, so for instance for english uh, we reach about 95% accuracy rates like 3 to 4% word error rate in speech recognition and we do this in american english british english or indian english different accents we do that so the beauty of uh, uh, this is coming from actually we own the technology. So we have this ASR engine. We developed it. And it's so easy for us to add another one. And uh, and this applies to adding languages to the NLU piece. So it's not only the ASR part, but the NLU piece as well. So that core, core technology that we developed uh is not standing still there. So we are constantly growing uh, and developing more uh, functionalities and making them better, improving them. And uh, we, as I said, we have 23 languages right now, we, excluding the accents, we support many different accents as well. And we are already an international company, uh, uh, John, actually. We, we were kind of late entering the one of the biggest markets, U.S., <laughs> So, but now we are here. So hopefully we're going to take our fair share out of this market. Well, no doubt. And for those global brands seeking, you know, a leader working across multiple cultures, multiple languages, I guess you call him in Boston and see what we can do. 
Um, Yellen, thank you so much for the time. This is the Future of Voice podcast, and we've been talking to Yellen Edesteren, who is the Regional Director for North America of Sestech, a, a leading speech recognition technology company doing great stuff. Um, Yellen, thank you so much for your time. Great to have you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. Thanks.